I've given some thought to what to do with the 17B plus. What I've done is I've taken the original generator and I've revamped it one last time. It will now allow me to uh, basically step through some different voltages. So my plan is to add some new columns to the spreadsheet based on how this generator has been modified. And what I'll do is I'll run the Fluke 101 through its paces and then I'm going to run the 17B. I'm probably not going to run 5KY's Fluke 107 again. Uh, the reason is is because you may remember I damaged this meter purposely <laughs> at about 15,000 volts and then I took it to 20 so it's actually damaged the circuit board of this meter. I had uh, troubles with this thing rolling off the desk and <laughs> so I was throwing out a piece of uh, packaging material and it had this real nice high density foam in there so I uh, carved out a section for this thing to sit down inside so yeah that's going nowhere now it's a good holder for it free <laughs> so that's my enhancement for my high voltage probe generator is updated so maybe in a few days here I'll start the test okay so I've got the new generator all set up I have already ran this Fluke 101 through all the tests it's passed again with line colors no problem so we're going to go ahead and start now with the uh, Fluke 17B Plus. Okay, I'll go ahead and verify functionality. Okay, pretty impressive. No problems at all with it. This is our current waveform. You can see it's a uh, 10.5 kV, and this is a 50 microsecond full width half height. Previous waveform was 8 kV. Well, unfortunately it damaged the meter. All the functions work except the uh, temperature. You can see it reads uh, overload. Doesn't matter if you flip it or anything. Yep, so we definitely damaged it. This is looking at the main circuit board for the 17B+. So I started tracing some of this out. And if you can see the amount of grease around this rotary switch. This is what I was originally talking about. This thing is really just packed full of grease. So anyway, it looks like the thermocouple comes up this run here. 
up to the main switch here and then across and then from here it works its way up this way up to this junction here and you start chasing this around and it goes it looks like into this part here I looked this up and this is a SGM one of the applications is for a strain gauge and thermocouple front ends so I suspect this is what's bad on this so when I first opened up the Ampro BAM 530 and I was comparing the two circuit boards one of the things I'd mentioned was how the battery clips for the Ampro 530 are soldered into the board and I was saying which one would be a better design I can tell you for troubleshooting this sucks because unless I'm willing to solder some wires onto this there isn't a good way to attach to this board so yeah troubleshooting is a nightmare with this where the other one I could have just clipped on and would be good to go anyway it does appear that this op amp is damaged so yeah this is just a uh, chopper stabilized very low drift op amp so I'm gonna go ahead and order another one of these I actually fired up the meter and I took the output signal coming off of this it feeds up through uh, I think it was this resistor up here and if I bias the output of this it actually does change the display for the temp instead of railing and when I change the input voltage uh, the output of this does not move so yeah it does appear that the uh, op amp itself is damaged so I'll go ahead and get a replacement for this and we'll swap this out and see if this thing will come back to life Okay, let's do a basic checkout. We have a 1 ohm, 50 ohms, 100 ohm, 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg. 10 meg continuity test single diode 2 in series 3 in series one nanofarad 1 microfarad, 1 microfarad, 10 microfarad, 10 microfarad. Yeah, it looks like it could be trimmed a little bit. I'm just comparing it against my soldering iron and the room temp thermostat set at about uh, 70 degrees and right now the soldering iron is reading about 10 degrees higher than this it's cooling down I'm just kind of comparing the two so yeah temperatures off a little bit now but after changing that op amp I gotta believe we're gonna have to retweak that pot but looks fine This is with uh, 5 volts AC applied. It's with half a volt applied. So 50 millivolts applied. Let's compare.
comparing it with my bench meter and yeah so it's about uh, two millivolts off not too bad this is one millivolt applied one volt applied and 10 volts applied mm -hmm. about 50 millivolts is what I was saying before all the testing so yep looks fine so these are the new tests that I've set up to run with the old generator I start out at 6 kV so the 2 ohm source 50 microsecond full width half height and then I go up by increments of 2 kV you may notice originally out here I was running that generator all the way out to 100 microsecond full width half height and the reason that I've dialed that down is if somebody wanted to reproduce these tests these would basically be the standard IEC full width half height so anybody could go out and purchase a 12,000 volt IEC generator and repeat these tests if they wanted you can see I've added the Fluke 101 to the bottom row and just above it is the 17B plus and out here this is the uh, beginning of the test and you can see I repeated all these with the 101 I just want to make sure that uh, the generator was actually working okay so I used the 101 as a load so then I started running the uh, 17B of course it passed at 6 kV with no problems that's uh, basically less energy than what I had tested it to with the old generator a little higher voltage and then I took it up to 8 kV and it passed just fine and I went to uh, 10 kV is where it finally broke down at so this is the Brahman just above it of course I never ran that Brahman through these tests I don't really have any plans to at this point so you can see here the Fluke 107 you can see it ran all the way to 13 kV with a 2 ohm source and a 100 microsecond full width half height and then went to 14 kV and then it failed at 15 kV so this is quite a bit more energy before this uh, 107 finally failed so let me just summarize this a little bit if I compare it against this Ampro AM 530 these are both 4000 count meters and again even though the AM probe doesn't have a millivolt scale here on the dial when we measure down into the millivolts the two meters are basically the same accuracy the cost of the 17B was $156 versus the AM probe at 80 otherwise basically have the same features except the AM probe has a bar graph so we can see here at the base where you know the fluke doesn't have that AM probe has a little flashlight of course the fluke doesn't have that the AM probe has a non-contact voltage detection fluke does not have that this is a true RMS meter the fluke is an averaging meter the manual that was supplied with the fluke is in Chinese only it was no problem to uh, download the manual in English of course the Amprobe meter is already in English so that's not a problem when I had the meters apart you could see both meters use the same size fuse for the 10 amp scale the Amprobe uses a smaller body style it's still a thousand volt uh, 500 milliamp fuse ceramic so it's not really a problem but uh, the fluke will use the larger fuse you know cost wise to replace the fuse it's probably a little bit cheaper than for the amp probe so with the features that the amp probe has and it costing about half of the price of the fluke it really comes down to if you would like a meter that's more robust the fluke definitely does a better job than the amp probe this is a far more robust meter than this and you saw my test data the amp probe died really early on in the test and this thing carried through pretty much to the very end again with the 17b plus costing 156 dollars the amp probe am 530 at 80 uh, the Bryman here on the other hand with its dual temperature sensors crest mode you know this thing's got features galore it's a 500,000 count meter it's very accurate it's very robust 
and the cost difference between these two I think depending on the day of the week is only going to be about like fifty to sixty dollars so for me having a nice meter that I'd actually use around the lab versus uh, something like this that I may keep in my trailer to work on my to work on my bikes with or something um, I'd rather have this meter I'd rather spend the money on this and uh, have a meter that's more capable so it's not a bad meter the fluke is not a bad meter it's definitely held its own it's very robust it's got a lot more features than the 107 or the 101 did if you're looking for something that's a good uh, good solid well-built mid-range meter that if you don't need RMS uh, this may be the ticket for you so I hope you enjoyed the video Till next time till we get another meter maybe we'll run the uh, the 139 C next <laughs> later